Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am Sharat, one of the placement coordinators from Mechanical Branch. Uh, we are back with another session of Journey Through Placement. This is where we interact with our place students and provide tips and hacks for our viewers. And not just that, this content is inspiring and they also provide the necessary motivation. So, you know, uh, without any further ado, let's kick start the session. And first of all, Vaishnavi Vasha, welcome to the session. Um, congratulations on getting into Western Digital. Uh, you know what, introduce yourselves. Yeah. I'm Oisha from 4th uh, year Electronics and Communications. I'm Vaishnavi from 4th year Electronics and Communications. Yeah, thank you guys. So, uh, let's start about the company. So, what does Western Digital do? So, Western Digital is an American uh, multinational company which generally works on uh, hard drives, SSD, SSD and also some of the uh, cloud solution and cloud storage parts. Okay. So, you know why we are here, we want to know the knitting grit of the selection process, so let's discuss about that. So how many rounds were there? So basically it was uh, different for uh, all the candidates. Okay. Uh, we've had three rounds, we have, we've had two rounds of interview, we've had uh, four rounds of interview. So for everyone, the uh, common round was the first uh, virtual test. So there uh, the questions included from uh, aptitude and uh, various other topics like uh, subjects like computer networks, uh, operating systems and especially SQL and programming questions. Uh, programming both in uh, coding and as well as MCQs. Okay. So I hope the first round was very similar to that even yeah. for you. I had the same round, basic screening round yeah, uh, with uh, aptitude as well as uh, technical questions. Whereas the aptitude had general quantitative questions along with some work or work related, daytime related basic questions. Whereas technical questions were uh, generally on the basic queries of uh, SQL, some of the algorithms in operating system or to debug certain uh, programs, simple programs and uh, uh, get the correct answers. Whereas uh, uh, the coding questions were, I think we had like four coding questions out of which uh, three were to uh, code the entire program. Whereas one of the question was to debug the uh, compilation error. There was a compilation error. So we have to optimize that and uh, get the correct uh, solution. Uh, that was one of the questions. Where, uh, all the other three were complete code. So uh, the quant section had some usual suspects. So okay, let's have a deep discussion about the topics you just mentioned. So you said uh, there were questions on SQL. Like, can you just give us an example? Like, what sort of questions were asked from SQL? SQL, there were basic uh, query questions. There would be a table, and they would say that I would. Uh, they would require this as output. Uh, this as the uh, data you have to retrieve from that table. So what the query might be. So there would be, there would be uh, options. It was all MCQs, the multiple choice questions. So there uh, we had to choose the proper um, answer for that. Okay. So can you? Shed some light on what sort of programs were asked. There were simple uh, basic programming questions. The three were comparatively uh, easier. Uh, the debugging question was just we had to change uh, two lines of code. Okay. We had to include uh, two lines of code so that uh, it would uh, compile properly and we would get a proper output. That, that was. So yeah, like before we move ahead, because we are asked, I mean, we are discussing a lot on programming. I just want to know, like. How much preparation or how much knowledge requires, you know, to crack these tests? Like especially programming skills. Yeah, one needs to be good in at least one uh, programming language. Either it is Python, Java, C plus plus, or even C. Anything is fine. So they should be good at a particular uh, programming language, and uh, no, they should have learned some basic algorithms and uh, basic data structures, and also handle those. Uh, however, in uh, Western Digital, uh, the coding questions were not so difficult, but if you talk in general about uh, 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 programming questions, if, if you have to deal with a particular programming question, uh, way of preparation is, you have to know basics of uh, data structures and algorithms, yeah, that is fine. Yeah. They can do it, they can do it. Yeah. So you guys just mentioned a lot of buzzwords like data structure and algorithms. I am from Mechanical I please can you guys educate me? Like, what is this topic and where can I learn about these topics? Yeah, data structure and algorithm is uh, the like it's like a foundation for uh, computer science students or uh, anyone who is willing to get into software field. So uh, we can learn, uh, 
especially me, I have learned it from uh, YouTube videos and also we had a subject in, uh, in our curriculum. So that really helped uh, me. Um, and then uh, we, during uh, lockdown, we had this Coursera uh, learning thing that we did provided free courses. So that really helped in learning all this uh, stuff uh, related to it. But uh, essentially, I just mentioned Coursera and other platforms. I just want to know, like, is it really important to have lots of certifications for these interviews, or does it doesn't even matter? Uh, getting certificates is not important. While uh, doing courses, you have to learn, you have to understand what you are doing. Uh, in interviews, they do not ask uh, you to show certificates usually. So they will check uh, if you have knowledge in that or not. Any, if you want to add upon that? Yeah. I had learned from uh, various uh, study platforms like Geeks for Geeks and uh, W3 schools. But most of the DSA and algorithm part I had learned from uh, YouTube from a particular channel called uh, Take You Forward. The instructor name is Raj Vikram Aditya. Uh, he teaches all the algorithms and data structures uh, in an easy manner. He gives all the, uh, the different types of approaches to a single problem like he has to offer a normal approach, a better approach and an optimized uh, approach using different algorithms to a same particular problem. So what this does is uh, you can go through different approaches for a particular problem which allows you to think in a different way when you are approaching a problem like uh, when you see a data structure problem so you think of uh, using a stack or a queue. So it depends. He gives various approaches which uh, usually helps the students. So, if you are seeing this video, please uh, check it out. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that was just brilliant. I mean, you guys just threw lots of content. Um, I just want to know, like, building up to the uh, test, like, how much preparation had you guys done? Like, it, was it in terms of weeks or was it in terms of months? How much preparation did you guys have? So, um, by getting into a third year, at the end of the third year, uh, the placement season started. So it was the time when uh, all the students would get into uh, placement preparation. So um, I started learning aptitude in the beginning and then all the core subjects. Uh, so as an EC student, I was also concentrating on core subjects as well as the uh, other computer science uh, uh, subjects like coding, practicing coding or uh, learning SQLs. So then uh, I think that uh, helped me. I mean, instantly I want to ask, like, you guys, you guys are from uh, electronics and uh, from everything you just said, uh, all the questions and technical questions that were asked in Western Digital Assessments were kind of related to software development and computer science. So you guys had to make some effort to learn this because it was not part of your curriculum if I am right. So, yeah, I'm right. So from everything we just discussed, uh, what I have taken home is that curriculum, it's just a means to an end. So apart from that, we have to learn many topics, subjects. And as you guys said, like, there are many platforms where you can easily learn this. Yeah. So that being said, let's move ahead. So how are the next steps in the selection process? What was the next round? So uh, after the uh, first round of uh, virtual test, uh, there was interview. Mm. Three people were shortlisted from the test. So in uh, my interview, I have two panelists, uh, they were from a USA branch. So then uh, they asked me questions related to like few of the questions from technical uh, domain and also from a uh, managerial type of questions. Uh, I was expecting something related to, uh, totally related to resume, but uh, they focus more about uh, other projects, but then they asked me like, uh, how would, what do you expect from Western Digital? What would uh, you, what are you searching for? Mm. And uh, also, uh, the, they asked me to elaborate on my projects. They asked me to explain in a uh, few words. They saw me how it's all all that is important in an interview is how you explain about your projects. Uh, they do not see what really you have done or uh, what projects you have worked on. They see how much knowledge you have on that and how would you express it. That's that's what I understood from the first round of interview. Okay, so what what was the next round? So next round, after my first round of interview, I was directly called for HR round. Okay. So HR round was basically knowing about uh, myself. So the, it was about uh, ten, uh, 10 minutes. So she asked about my uh, place, my name, my family, uh, all basic stuff. Okay. So how was the selection process for you? Was it any different? 
unlike her, I had uh, three different uh, rounds of interview. Okay. But however, we had uh, like similar panel. My panel was also from uh, uh, USA okay. branch of uh, Western Digital. But I had uh, one panel is each interview. I had two different uh, interviews for my round. So basically, first round of interview was on uh, my resume itself, my projects, all my internships uh, that I had done. So I had done uh, an internship on the uh, uh, DevOps, which is a uh, uh, methodology that the company generally uses uh, in order to uh, follow the process. So, there were a few uh, basic questions on uh, what is a DevOps, how would you uh, inculcate that in uh, Western Digital, like uh, how is DevOps different from various other methodologies like Agile, Waterfall. So, that was some basic questions and uh, some basic questions on uh, uh, some DevOps uh, tools that we use, uh, Maven. Uh, Jenkins and also uh, yeah, man Jenkins and some questions on Git too. So that was basically w what they asked in uh, first round. Okay. Whereas the next round was uh, totally different. Like it was some manager type of uh, mm -hmm. questions. We generally give a situation in which we have to you know uh, come up with a particular solution. Mm -hmm. Like I had uh, some question that they asked on uh, finance. Like. Uh, the question was usually like, uh, you, like suppose you are in charge of a particular project and the client wants you to inculcate some new features into the project that too at the dead end, like when the project is almost over. So, mm. at such a situation, what would you do? Mm. So, if you are the manager of uh, that group, how would you manage the situation? So, uh, questions were basically like that in the second round and then I had uh, uh, the, the next round was uh, HR, which was mm -hmm. just about like uh, five minutes of HR, basically knowing about uh, me, how uh, whether I would re relocate to Bangalore and some questions, and that was it. Okay, so I mean, both of you uh, had some questions you were not expecting, so you guys had to think on your feet. Uh, that's just great. Um, like, what is the most important thing to nail this? Is it just communication skills or? Uh, does it take more than just communication skills? I think it's uh, both technical skill and also soft skills. Okay. Um, I would like to say that internships that you make also uh, gives weightage to your resume. Mm -hmm. So for me, especially in my technical interview round, all the questions that they asked me were somewhat related to my internship project. It takes more than just technical skills to you know face these sort of situations. Low. So how can our viewers improve their soft skills? Uh, there are various uh, student clubs in our college, so I would suggest to be a part of any of them and interact with your peers and that gives you all the confidence that you need to face any interview. So uh, I was part of robotics club and the entrepreneurship cell in our college which, which boost, uh, boosted my uh, you know, soft skills and the confidence that I require to face this interview. Okay, so. At last, any tips or suggestions for our viewers? Yes. Uh, make you utilize all the opportunities that you get uh, in your yes. college days. Be an volunteer. Be, be a volunteer to any of the uh, like functions or uh, programs that uh, goes on your college or uh, any of the uh, join any of the uh, student clubs. Take part. Involve yourself. Interact with your peers, and that's all I would like to say. Yeah, so why should any suggestion from your important uh, suggestion I would like to give is uh, be confident uh, in your interviews. Like be bold. Even if the answer is wrong, like uh, don't be discouraged with a particular answer. Go move on with the interview. Just uh, move with the flow. And uh, even if you didn't pass a particular uh, interview, it doesn't matter. You'll have uh, various opportunities. So, you know, uh, just keep get, uh, getting better every day. Uh, try new things and eventually you'll succeed. I would like to add something here. Mm -hmm. So during the interviews, you might not be knowing what questions they might, even in the technical uh, aspects, you might not be knowing which topics to read. Just go on uh, studying uh, with your face or on your own face. So this gives uh, the confidence that you have, uh, you want to face your interview because you will be having that in your mind that okay, I know all these things that I would be requiring. So that that really boosts you in the interview. Okay. So I guess it was a great session guys, I mean I learned a lot, I am sure that our viewers have also taken some value back. So that's it guys, we'll be back with another session soon, so keep waiting and watching and hit the subscribe button.